The Elwha River in Washington State is running free for the first time in a century. The Elwha and the Glenness Canyon are gone, marking the largest dam removal project in US history. But that title is about to change. The Klamath River, stretching 414 kilometers from Oregon to Northern California, is next. Four of its six dams are slated for demolition, a monumental undertaking that will restore a nearly unimpeded flow to the river. This will allow fish like salmon and trout to migrate freely while revitalizing the surrounding ecosystem. It's not just Elwha and Klamath. Across the United States, over 2,000 dams have been removed since 1912. Some are simply too old, others no longer serve their intended purpose, and many are causing significant ecological harm. But how do you actually remove a dam? Especially colossal ones the size of those on Klamath. Picture this, the United States in the 1950s a nation rebuilding and expanding, with a thirst for progress and power. This first led to an unprecedented era of dam construction, particularly in the West. From the iconic Hoover Dam completed in 1936 to the lesser known Gleans Canyon Dam on the Elwha River, finished in 1927. These structures symbolize human ingenuity and control over nature. But this control came at a steep price. Rivers' once dynamic ecosystems were transformed into stagnant reservoirs. Sediment, the lifeblood of rivers, was trapped behind concrete walls, starving downstream habitats of essential nutrients. This led to riverbed erosion, the disappearance of sandy beaches and gravel bars crucial for fish spawning, and the loss of fertile floodplains. Fish populations, particularly migratory species like salmon, suffered immensely. Dams blocked their ancient roots, preventing them from reaching spawning grounds and causing populations to plummet. The Elwha River, for example, once teemed with 400,000 salmon annually. By the 1990s, that number had dwindled to a mere 3,000. The human cost was equally devastating. Indigenous communities, whose lives were intertwined with the rivers, were forcibly displaced. Their ancestral lands were flooded, the cultural practices disrupted, and their connection to the natural world severed. But time has a way of revealing hidden truths. The dams, once hailed as engineering marvels, began to show their cracks. Many built with lifespans of 50 to 100 years are now well past their prime. Climate change, with its intensifying droughts and floods, is putting additional stress on these aging structures, increasing the risk of catastrophic failure. We've also come to realize that the ecological damage caused by dams often outweighs the benefits. The decline of fish populations, the loss of biodiversity, and the disruption of natural cycles have prompted a re-evaluation of our relationship with rivers. This reevaluation has led to a growing movement to remove dams, particularly those that are obsolete or causing significant harm. Since 1912, over 2,000 dams have been removed across the United States, and the pace is accelerating. The Elwha River Reservation Project, completed in 2014, stands as a testament to the transformative power of dam removal. With the dams gone, the river is rebounding. Salmon are returning, sediment is replenishing the riverbed, and the ecosystem is slowly healing. But the Elwha is just the beginning. The Klamath River project said to remove four dams will be the largest dam removal in history. It's a monumental undertaking, fraught with challenges and complexities. Now that we've explored the why of the dam removal, let's delve into the how. Removing a dam isn't as simple as just knocking it down. It's a complex engineering feat that requires meticulous planning and execution, often spanning years of preparation and intricate operations. While some smaller dams can be removed with relative ease, using excavators or even controlled explosions, large dam removals are a different beast altogether. They require meticulous planning, years of preparation, and a deep understanding of the intricate interplay between engineering and the environment. The journey often begins with the drawdown, a gradual lowering of the reservoir's water level. 
This is a crucial step as it reduces the water pressure on the dam and exposes the sediment that has accumulated behind it over the decades. Let's take the example of the Gleans Canyon Dam in the Elwha River in Washington State. This 64 meter high concrete arch dam was removed in 2012 through a meticulously managed drawdown. Engineers ingenuously cut notches into the dam structure, creating temporary spillways that allowed water to flow through and gradually erode the concrete. This method facilitated the controlled release of sediment, minimalizing downstream impacts and allowing the river to reclaim its natural course. In contrast, the San Clemente Dam on California's Carmel River, a 45 meter high earthen dam, presented a unique challenge due to the sheer volume of sediment trapped behind it. In this case, engineers opted for a groundbreaking solution, rerouting the river around the dam, effectively bypassing the massive sediment deposits. This innovative approach prevented potential downstream flooding and erosion caused by a sudden sediment release, while simultaneously restoring the river's natural flow. Sometimes a more dramatic approach is warranted, in 2011, the Condit Dam on the White Salmon River was removed in a spectacular display of controlled demolition. A series of carefully placed explosions created a massive breach in the 38 meter high concrete dam, allowing the river to surge through and naturally erode the remaining structure. While visually captivating, this method is reserved for specific dam types and environmental conditions where the risk of downstream damage is minimal. Now, let's turn our attention to the Klamath River, where the largest dam removal project in history is currently underway. Four dams, each with its unique characteristics and challenges, are slated for removal. In early March 2023, crews began their groundwork, improving roads and bridges to allow access to heavy construction equipment. This initial phase, lasting about eight to nine months, was crucial to ensure the safe and efficient removal of the four dams. JC Boyle, Copco number one, Copco number two, and Iron Gate. Copco number one, a 39 meter high concrete gravity arch dam, underwent significant modifications to prepare for the drawdown. A concrete work pad was constructed downstream, serving as a platform for drilling a new three meter diameter adit through the dam's base. This tunnel extending approximately 45.7 meters through the dam was designed to control the release of water and sediment during the drawdown. A 10 foot long plug was left at the upstream end of the adit to be blasted and removed when the time came to lower the reservoir's water level. Iron Gate Dam, the largest of the four, at 52.7 meters high, also required a significant preparation. An existing low-level tunnel was reinforced to withstand the hydraulic forces anticipated during the drawdown. Engineers meticulously modeled the potential range of conditions, considering dry, average, and wet years to ensure the tunnel's stability. JC Boyle Dam, a 20.7 meter high embankment and concrete structure, utilized existing culverts under the dam to facilitate the drawdown. These culverts, originally used for diverting water during construction, were blocked by concrete stop logs. These stop logs were removed by blasting, allowing water to flow through the culverts and gradually lowering the reservoir's level. The smallest dam, the Copco No. 2, was removed in 2023, using drilling and blasting techniques. This marked a significant milestone in the project, demonstrating the feasibility of removing these massive structures. In January 2024, the drawdown of the remaining three reservoirs commenced. This marked the beginning of a multi-year process that will see the Klamath River gradually return to its natural state. The release of sediment, initially turning the river a murky brown, is a crucial step in the restoration process. This sediment, while a natural part of the river system, carries decades worth of accumulated pollutants. To mitigate this, engineers are harnessing the river's natural power to flush the sediment downstream. This allows sediment to eventually settle, replenishing the riverbed and providing essential nutrients for the ecosystems. Once the reservoirs are drained, the final phase of the project begins, the complete removal of the remaining dams. Each dam will be dismantled using a combination of mechanical demolition and controlled blasting, with debris carefully managed to minimize environmental impact. 
Materials like earth and concrete rubble will be repurposed wherever possible, such as filling scour holes and creating new habitats for fish and wildlife. The Klamath River Dam Removal Project is a testament to human ingenuity and our evolving understanding of the impact on the natural world. It's a bold step towards restoring a river that has been altered for over a century and a beacon of hope for a future where humans and nature can coexist in harmony. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay informed. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below.